Boom. All right. What's going on, everybody? You're tuned into another episode of the Music Mastery Podcast with your host, Leezy the Gifted. And I'm super excited and pumped to have this special guest on. I found out about this guy on TikTok and he blew up hella quick. And I was like, damn, dude, this guy is blowing up. And I was like, let me just go check his IG. And I was like, oh, he's accessible on IG. So I shoot him a DM. Had him on the, uh, have him on the pod, and it, it's been awesome. I've been seeing his content for a long time. So just help me in welcoming my man, Shane Lance. Shane, thanks for coming on, bro. Uh, how you doing today? I'm doing well, man. I'm honored to be here. I see your stuff all over as well. So it's, it's fun for me as it is for you. Dope. Man, I'm excited. So tell me about, like, how did you, like, uh, how did you get into, like, music and all that like growing up what was it like and how did, how did I just how did you find your way toward music and where you're at today yeah it's a great question I grew up around music both my parents are musicians and songwriters uh and then spent a bunch of time in church uh my parents are pastors are and were pastors my entire life so I, that's a whole other world but pastors kids know you just play whatever instruments the church needs that's kind of how it goes and for me that ended up being a killer thing where I just learned a ton of instruments early on. So started on, well, my dad tried to start me on guitar when I was maybe four or five and I wasn't into it, but guitar, uh, drums, bass. And then I play some key. I would never tell a keyboard player that I play keys, uh, but I know enough to do what I need to do. Right. Um, and I know theory well. So, so yeah, bass, drums, and guitar are my main instruments. And then from there, just bands in high school, singer songwriter stuff in the box production stuff just all loosely through through high school and when I got to my senior year you know through some running start program stuff I completed so many credits that there was a tech college offering an audio engineering program and I'd grown up again same context I grew up around music I grew up around live sound stuff and had been in studios for my own music so I thought well that'd be cool a good way to turn you know, this music passion into some kind of legitimate job. And I put legitimate because we all know, you know, we're all hustling it out however we need yeah. to. A, a job or finding a job is overrated. I think we're all learning. You really have to make it happen yourself. Um, but at that time, I thought to myself, like, well, what better way to turn my passion for music into a job that could potentially, you know, make some real money. And so did the program. It wasn't a very good program, but I loved it. I love the people I was with. And I say it wasn't very good because the instructor, it just didn't know a ton. And he would say that. That's how like straightforward this guy was. He's like, look, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm not an audio. He came from the radio world. And so long story short, did that and then got an internship at the studio uh, in town that I had recorded at previous to that, like throughout high school. Mm -hmm. And that was 13 years ago. And although I do all my own stuff now, I'm now a partner here. I've been here for 13 years and I do a lot of different things throughout those years. I'm in a band and we've done some touring for a time, spent some time doing music director stuff at churches and producing full bands. And now my focus is maybe similarly to you. Uh, I'd like to hear more about you know, your focus too. Sounds fun, but similar to you, I, I love the communication side and like reaching out to people and offering value on the internet. That's what I'm most passionate about is yeah. communicating. Um, but my focus from a professional standpoint is mixing and finishing projects. People yeah. bring them to me when it's almost done. So I get to see the, the, the completion of vision, which is kind of fun for me. Absolutely. Yeah, I was on your, uh, I was on your website um, checking you out. And the first thing you put is communicator. Like you didn't even put yeah. mixing that you didn't put you said communicator and then comma music so um yeah. are you like have you ever done vocals or anything like that do you mean like uh singing or how do you mean yeah singing rapping whatever choir yep. oh yes you did yep. okay yep. So i was wondering because yeah traditional did you like yep never uh, traditional like choir stuff but uh in the band i'm in i sing Mm -hmm. I do hooks and stuff for people. That's a whole other side. That's not as prevalent. Like I don't put that on the internet as much, uh, not in the con, you know, not in like the Shane Lance context that, that you or others have seen me in recently. Right. But I do a ton of that still. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. I'm curious about something too. Tiny tangent. I want to go on. Um, Let's do it. You know, I I've been working with, um, you know, some producers lately and it really, I'm starting to realize that, like a really good audio engineer, I, f I feel like is um, also a, a sort of vocal coach in a way. Like I, I feel like I get my vocal coaching when I'm in the studio with 
whoever my producer is. Do you ever feel like when you're in the studio with certain people yeah. that you tend to do? Okay. So what's like the approach, like what's your approach to like, um, let me, let me just ask you this. Like, what do you, what do you think make, oh, I'm trying to ask this the right way. What, what, what's your approach to coaching somebody on their vocals while you're in the studio? It's a great question. Uh, my personal approach is if they're open to it, I like to give input. Absolutely. I care about the project. Early on, I worked with anything and everything. I take any, anyone that walked in the door. Now I'm in a privileged position to only have to work on projects that I enjoy. So I say that to say, for the most part, I'm either working with someone whose stuff I already like or who I build a bit of a relationship or partnership with so I can help make it better. I clarify that to say not everyone's psyched on an engineer speaking up and saying like, hey, you should hit that again. So that's a self-awareness you have to have. I know like I'm, I can read a room well enough to know within a few minutes if someone's not into input. And if that's the case, you know, then I'll, I'll back off and let them do their thing. So uh, that's maybe some context. But yeah, if I'm going to coach someone through, usually it, it just looks like, you know, you, you build a relationship, you get a feel for what they're capable of. You can, you know what they can do and they know what you can do. So you're kind of aiming at the same thing. And so when you speak up, you know, I'll, I'll often speak up and say, hey, that sounded killer. I loved hypothetically, I like the, the character in your voice, but like, I think you could hit that with more energy or I liked, I liked the energy, but that was really pitchy. I don't, let's not just rely on everything digital. Let's hit that again. And you can hit it cleaner. Yeah. Uh, and you can, you know, input any vocal input you want to put there, but that's usually how it goes for me. It comes really, really comes down to knowing what is possible, what they're capable of. Right. And it's funny too. Like, um, I I've started to, to realize that like, I'll write my lyrics or whatever, or yeah. sometimes I don't. Sometimes I'll just go, I'll kind of think of them and just go. Yeah. And the way I've noticed things going with me lately is like the songs that I'm starting to finish are the third or fourth draft of the hook. Like the first draft of the hook, like oh, wow. ever, because like yeah. I, if I'm by myself, I'll change it. Or it's likely that when I'm with other people, like an audio engineer or whoever, like they'll give me input always. And I'm always, I kind of know that in my head. I'm thinking, I just, I, I, okay. So I'm the type where, where it's not even an idea until it's on the, until it's on the mic in the session. So to me, I'm yeah, like, yeah. And so I'm like, let's do that because while I'm singing it out loud, it's going to sound and feel different than when the mic is recording. So yeah. I need to get like, first of all, I need to get my nerves out. Right. Yeah. Second yep. of all, let's test levels, right? Like, how's it sound yep. in the headphones? All that stuff. That that's gonna be like for me. That's four or five takes right there, just to test out that. And then, on on top of that, hearing it through speakers and headphone is so much different than hearing the speakers play the beat and then hearing my voice. So we aren't even gonna be able to think of new ideas until yep. we hear the beat and voice combined. Do you feel like? Yeah. Do you ever feel like? Um like do artists come to the studio kind of with their lyrics and they're like, this is what I'm doing. And then they're not open to critiques. Or do you feel like most of the artists you work with are open to critiques? It's a great question. I think the better artists are open for sure. And we know that I know that from an engineer perspective, I think I'm very good, but I'm, I'm really good because I know I'm not the best. If mm -hmm. that train of thought makes yeah, sense. Totally. So, so you have to be open. And I mean, for the most part, artists who aren't open, aren't growing. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, I would say the majority are open though. Like I said, right now I'm in a spot where my, my view might be a little biased because I'm, I'm working with people I enjoy who happen to be people who are open. I've worked though over the years with people who are not open to input. So someone walks in, they know exactly what they want for better or for worse. I mean, that's, there are times where they really do know what they want and mm -hmm. you just got to let them do it. Um, so yeah, most people are open. And these days I'll say in my context, although I do send, I, I would say maybe 50% of my schedule currently um, I allow it to fill with like people I work with locally who are here physically. Um, the other portion, just speaking to this process, I'm the guy often, so I have a ton of experience with what we're talking about. Absolutely. But I know the other end too, where you are, you have a creative, uh, you have creative input into a project that, that is already done from a creative perspective. So mm -hmm. I'm finishing it. People send music in from all over and I just wrap it up. So that is a unique same conversation really someone's open to to creative input on the mix or you know different effects or different vibes here and there but that is a, a different uh, approach when the track has already been made they've already laid it down the way that they want and you're really not a part of the, the producing so to speak. Yeah. you're just mixing stems basically uh -oh. 
Yeah, it's basically basically you're just mixing stems at that point, right? Yep, yep, which is a good portion of what I do. Like I said, I still work today. I'll work, I'll have two people coming in. So it's a lot of what I do, um, but a large portion. If I wanted to fill my entire schedule with just mixing people sending me stuff, I could. It's a unique balance. I like to be creatively involved. The mixing gives me more more time and more flexibility for family and my own creative stuff. So I, it's just kind of a, a balancing act. Right. Well, let me, let's talk about how, how you got into um, Mar- the TikTok stuff. Okay. You definitely have started to post. That's how I found out about you is yep. you started to kind of, you put a lot of stuff out on TikTok. Very good, quick tips. How did you, um, what made you want to start getting into that? It's a great question. I mean, at first I was just a lurker, as, as you would say, for like other areas of the internet, just watching and enjoying TikTok the way everyone does. Uh, it's ridiculously entertaining. So yeah, started there. Uh, at the end of last year, the reason I'm even hesitating, I'll start by saying I didn't really have a plan. I think people, as they learn, probably could or even should, like if you approach it with intention, um, the way it's worked for me and others would probably be easier. I didn't have a plan at first. End of last year, I started posting some random, I, I put communicator on my page for a reason. That's a big portion of what I've done throughout my life. It's like public speaking stuff. And so I started posting some basic like thoughts on life, thoughts on creativity, which I still do, but it was slightly less, which again, this makes it sound like this was my goal. It wasn't, I just was kind of puking it out there, but it was slightly less studio focused, which is ironic because I've done many things in my life, but the one thing I've done for the longest and most consistently is the studio. So it's a lesson in and of itself in hindsight, and that is you know, present what you know, you, you have the most value to offer in the area that you know. So, so yeah, post some of those things, pulled some down, not because I didn't like them, I just didn't know which direction I wanted to go. And then I, I think what started the takeoff were studio stories. I started telling a few stories from the studio. Oh, okay. And again, it wasn't anything new. That's what I've been doing, you know, at that time, it was not that, it was early this year. So it's not like that was a long time ago, but what, 12, 13 years deep in it. So I wasn't like pulling from nowhere, but I just thought, well, I'll just share some funny stories from the studio. And then uh, a few of those gained some traction. I can't remember the trajectory, but at one point, one specific video, like they started to gain a little bit in one specific video, which, you know, if you know the TikTok world, that's often how it happens. Like one specific video went viral and still is, is the video with, with the most views, I'm sure. And then from there, I was like, okay, this makes too much sense. Let me just lean into what I'm literally doing every single day. So now it's easy. I mean, not to, you know, not that I'm perfect at it by any means. I have no experience with production value from a video perspective, but it's easy because it's what I'm doing every day. I literally just treat it like a part of my day at the studio. And that's really nice. I don't have to pull content from out of nowhere. I can just highlight a mix I'm doing right now or a technique I used on a song. It's, it's just a part of what I do. So right. I hope that answers the question. Totally does. It's kind of funny. Um, not the answer I was expecting. And I'm glad you said that. It feels like our journeys are kind of similar. So I started my podcast like July, 2018. And it was called mm-hmm. Big Talk with Leezy. And it was meant to be personal development like because I'm so into like entrepreneurship and all that. And yeah. so yep. it was once a week. It was very much like just puking whatever I wanted to talk about, like just like whatever. Yeah. And it was cool. But then I, I niched down heavily to what it is now, Music Mastery yeah. Podcast. And I do it every day. And like, like you said, like you didn't have a plan. And I've realized like through what I'm doing, like planning is I think completely overrated because when, when you just tell yourself, like, I'm going to do a podcast every day for a year, that's the plan. It's one sentence. You don't need a whole yeah. fucking structure. And it's like, and it works because it, it, yeah. it, well, it is yeah. same with you. You didn't have a plan for TikTok, but you just like, you started and you're consistent and yep. there's your results. You know what I mean? So Yep. Do you, uh, t- again, again, slight off topic, but to the music, yeah. do you ever feel like when artists come through to the studio, they have this uh, thought in their head and they have like, I want to go in this direction. And, and do you, I mean, okay, really, I want to know, is that good to have that? Or is it better to just literally go in the studio and just be like, yo, whatever happens, happens? Like, where do you? Yeah, man, I, I, I hate the sounds indecisive but it's a little bit of both i mean people who come in when they when they know what they want creatively whether that's literally they come in knowing exactly how they want uh, something to sound 
uh, or if they just, and this is maybe more important, they just know themselves. So maybe they don't know it off the top of their head, but they'll know it when they hear it. Those people who are open but decisive, like I said, it's kind of an in-between answer, but they get the best results in my opinion. So it's a wide variety though. People, to answer the, the question specifically, some people come in and they've written every last drop of, of all their bars. They know exactly what they want their ad libs to be. They even have ideas for how they want the mix to hit. And then other people come in and, and they sit on the couch for an hour while the beat bumps and they write and just kind of see where it goes. So right. it's different for every artist. Um, I, I think the biggest thing which supersedes that, like your plan when you come in, is just knowing that you can't rush it. Like I, I've posted a lot of topics on both sides of this. So both, you know, both facets of this are true. But you really like sometimes it's time to just throw music out. You just got to get it out. I've talked a lot about that recently with some people, but ultimately I see people try to rush way too much. And what you end up doing is you take more time speaking to like having a plan and like just being obsessively stuck on it. It's those people who end up wasting time aiming for this arbitrary goal or the way they thought the song should sound. And then they end up coming back to re-record it or go from scratch or come in with a looser vibe anyway. So all that said, I think the best approach someone can have just not rushing it let let the song whether it's in that exact session or how you know making mix changes going home to write and come back and getting it right like just there's no deadline unless you literally have a label over your shoulder telling you the song has to be done more, then don't rush it like like that's the case there's no reason for that right yep that's real talk too i i agree with that um so let me, let me ask you this when it comes to uh um, when it comes to like mixing right um what, what do you think is, uh, let's talk vocals first. Let's yeah. talk mixing vocals. I think my audience is a lot of vocalists and rappers. So we'll, we'll yep. talk about the whole vocal mixing thing first. Um, do you have like a, uh, do you have like a reference? Do, do you use like, do you use reference tracks for vocals or, or, or are you kind of thinking like it depends on the vocalist? You know, and I'm trying, it's, it's like, you gonna have, okay. A preset? Have, yeah, do you have like a preset or do you, are you like, well, it depends. Like every vocalist has a different voice. I, I'm going to have to mix everyone different. Yeah. Uh, I definitely mix every voice a bit different. I have uh, a template session that I work from because I know my workflow and the basic plugins I like to have prepared, you know, Ox sends for effects and all that. So I open up, I start every session with the same template, but when it comes to mixing, we'll make it specific to vocals. I'm using often the same tools. It's like I, I, the analogy I can parallel with it is like a barber, like a barber is going to use for the most part, the same clippers, same scissors on every head, but every head's going to look different because every person has different hair and a different head. Right. So that's, that's what it comes down to for me is I'm using the same tools. I've actually had sessions sit behind me who, who just don't know. And they're looking at the plugins I'm using and they're like, Hey, I saw you use those plugins on the last guy. Like, what's the deal? Almost offended that I would dare use the same plugins. And I'm like, dude, that's, and I, that's where I, Oh really? First time. Oh yeah, certainly. There's people who think maybe more highly of themselves than they should and think like, Oh, you need to be using the, the platinum gold plugins on me. They obviously don't know what they're talking about. Exactly. Well, but and that's an EQ they, on the last guy too. <laughs> yeah. It gave me a chance to parallel. Like I said, the, the barber thing, like you, you wouldn't, want your barber to just grab new clippers they've never used because they're, you know, gold plated or something like you right. want your person to use the tools they know best. So to answer the question, I use the same often the same chain of plugins, but I'm doing it by ear per every vocalist often. Like I don't even have presets for uh, different, uh, what am I trying to say for a specific vocalist, unless someone has their rapper and they rap with a really consistent flow every time, which happens by the way. I mean, you know, rap well enough to know, like, I have a handful of guys who do, they just spit the same every time. Like that's their thing. In that case, I'll use a preset. But for example, let's say it's the same vocalist, but they're singing like, they might be in the same session, same mic, their voice feels the same, same preamp, all of it. But if they're singing different songs, I'm gonna work from scratch on every song because keys are different. Frequencies hit different in different keys. And that that's just for me what it takes to get it right by ear. Right. Um, do you ever have a, uh would you say you're a perfectionist i think i'm a weird combo no for the most part i would i would say i'm not 
uh, I think it's, you know, not to think too highly of myself, it's years of experience that has taught me to do things right. So I'm meticulous for sure. And as I just said, I mean, you know, it's easy to use presets. If I'm in a rush or someone's in a rush, I'll slap a preset on. So, you know, I could take that easy way out. Um, in this case, for example, like, I, you know, I know what needs to be done. If it's, it's going to take extra work, I'm happy to do it. On the flip side, this is where I feel more like, it, and again, it sounds maybe at least somewhat similar for you. I feel more like a communicator interested in like bettering my life and the lives around me than I do an artist. Because sometimes I'm, like, I'm over the meticulous creative side of it where an artist wants to rework a song a hundred times to get it right. I'm the guy who's quick, even with my own stuff, like in my own band, this might surprise some people, but I'm the guy usually who's like, just, I don't even care. Let's just get it out. Like this sounded 10 versions ago was fine to me. Like, let's go. So I, I would say generally, no, actually, I want things to sound right, but the vibe is right. Then let's just do it. You know, see, I have the almost exactly the same as you. Like that's the way I am too. And sometimes it's good. But sometimes it's sometimes for me it's to a fault because oh for sure yeah because yeah, then I won't make the best product I possibly can and um, it's a balance absolutely yeah and I've worked with uh you know I've worked with all all types of people and I I definitely don't like working with people who are perfectionists because then the song I've heard the quote that done is better than perfect so like that's more my take on it and um, yeah. sometimes not all the time. But sometimes I feel like being a perfectionist is actually just an excuse because you're too insecure to put the thing out. So you want to make the excuse, oh, I just want it to be perfect because it just comes from insecurity yeah. to me. And I feel like, well, why not just like, Dude. you're not going to know if it's good, if people don't yeah. hear it. You know what I mean? You're absolutely right. That comes down because I'm in the same boat. And often it's the people around me who, when I'm in a rush or just like, whatever, let's go who will speak up and say like, I really do think we can make this better. And I appreciate that. So same as you, I mean, it can be a weakness. You got to be careful. I will say though, speaking of that to the artists who are perfectionists, usually those people like they, they hit the mark, they hit perfect and then they go past it. And, and mm. then you lose what was perfect. And I find that all day, every day. That's the artists who are meticulously obsessed with every last thing there. Mm. I'm telling you, their stuff turns out worse than the artist who just goes outside to smoke while I mix and literally doesn't care what happens. <laughs> I, I, I'm thinking of a specific guy I work with all the time who, who just trusts me so much that he doesn't even stay in the room. And that's a good portion of what I do anyway is mixing alone, but he, right. he's here. He could be behind me, you know, over my shoulder obsessively commanding everything. And he just leaves, lets me do my thing and it sounds great. So sometimes you just end up circling around it when you were there, you know, you were there an hour ago. You could have just left it alone. Right. So, so mostly you'd say artists leave you alone to do the mixing. It depends. I'll be working with someone, uh, you know, here in a little bit where they'll sit with me the whole time. I do that. Like I said, that's now more a personal choice. I'll work with local artists and, and let them do that. My personal preference. And I actually think this is good for the workflow. Not only that, but it's kind of selfish. Like I just prefer to be alone for a bit of it, but my personal preference, what I think is best for the flow is that, I get a feel for what they want and then do it solo so that I can really, without feeling this like over your shoulder, someone's watching every move and comment on all the little things, get the sound where I think it should be. And then we can hear that and, and adjust from that foundation together versus them, you know, observing every meticulous part, but it varies truly. Like I said, I'll be with someone, even though my preference is to, to mix at least initially alone, I'll be with someone right now who's you know going to sit with me through three songs of mixing. So wow. it just depends. Yep. I, I mean, so for me, like the different thing with me is I do producing and mixing. So when I, if I, if yep. someone else is mixing, I want to be there just to learn because yep. Yep. Chances are you're better at it or whoever I'm working with is better at it than me. So I can learn something. So, and I'm never going to be, yeah. Like, cause I know sometimes artists will say, um, and that's another part of collaboration that you got to get right. Is like, like, let's say I'm making a beat. And in my head, I'm already thinking five steps ahead. Same with mixing. I'm already thinking five steps ahead. The move yeah. I'm making right now is one of five. So they'll, I'll do something and they'll go, no, 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 no. Or, oh, wait, can you do that? I'm like, dude, hold on. I already have the next five steps. Can you just like, and that, that, that's more why I prefer to mix alone because I'm like, you're, I don't even want you to say anything because yeah. I'm going this way. And I already know where we're going. But if you yeah. say something, you're gonna, it's like throwing yeah. like a baseball at me while I'm driving a car. You know what I mean? Like check out this baseball. Perfect, or perfectly yeah. put. Yep. Right. So. Yep. So when it comes to like, 
have you ever had artists collaborate where you're the engineer, but you have two artists collaborating on, and they're both on the song, like in the studio at the same time? All the time. Yeah. What's that, what's that whole process like for you? In that case, I mean, it feels a bit like you're facilitating a hangout, right? Like that's why the studio can be just like a party atmosphere, which is fine. Again, I get to work with people I enjoy. So they book the room. I, I, this is not what you're asking, but I joke with people like that who come in and collaborate and write on the spot. I'm an expensive person to pay to sit around, but yeah. if that's how you want to work, then go for it. I wouldn't like, I can't afford to let me sit around, but that's how some people like to work. So yes, usually that looks like a couple guys come in. If they haven't worked out in advance, it's as easy as both of them going in guys or girls going in and tracking their parts and that's it. But if they're working on, on the spot, it's some version of like bumping the beat and they're just behind me kind of spitting or coming up with bars, singing melodies, just figuring it out and, and then, running in and out of the booth until they've locked in what they want. Right. Okay. So, so tell me about this. What, what, what is like, cause it sounds like you've mixed for a while, but you probably still go through obviously learning curves and challenges. Like right now, Absolutely. what is the hardest, what is the biggest challenge you're going through right now with mixing? That's a good question. You are absolutely right. I'm not pausing because it's just so difficult for me to think of how I'm imperfect. <laughs> uh, right. But it's, it is like you're constantly learning. I feel like, and I would say this probably every two or three years, but I feel like I've grown immensely in just the last few years. So you're always growing. And you know, right. even digitally, things are evolving. So try to think. I mean, so like, like let me ask say, you, what I, what I really want to know is what's that next level for you? Like, what's that next step where you're like, I need my mixes to do this, or I need to be able to do this. Like, what's that next thing that you want to see from yourself? Say it one more time. I lost you for just a second. Oh, sorry. What's that next thing you want to see for yourself? Like, what's that next level of growth where you're like, that's going to be the next level for me? And I would say for me, it's mastering, which I know is a separate topic. And often I'm mastering for artists anyway. I mean, if you know anything about mastering, it's kind of an elusive topic. Some people it's as easy as slapping on a limiter or uploading it to a site. Uh, there are people who do that professionally and have done it for 50 years and it's like the science. So it's, there's a, this vast disparity between how serious mastering is. But, and I don't just say that to say like, to pawn it off on this ambiguous thing, mastering. I feel like I'm, I'm really good at getting down in the weeds of the EQ compression effects, getting the vocal vibe right. What I'd like to see to answer, because that's a great way to put the question, for me, I, I would like to see that finished product just, just that much shinier, just perfectly captured and glued together. And I feel like I nail that sometimes, but I can tell, especially as I'm doing more and more work and more and more high end work and getting to choose who I work with, that that's like, a, yeah, to be transparent, absolutely. That's where I see where I can grow. It's like, okay, I've, I've now leveled up in, in the space I'm in and I'm at the top. The next tier, like, you know, this is true for self growth. Like, uh, in it, like maybe an entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial sense. Like I hit the top of my tier. That means I'm about to be at the bottom of the next tier. Yeah. So I, I got to get ready to grow. So that, that's a great question. I like that question. And that's where I'm at. Like I just topped out doing like independent artists. Um, and I love that. I'm not speaking down on that, but like as I level up and do more and more commercial work, it's going to be on the mastering side and really letting a track be fat and glued and crispy the way that it needs to be. So I hope that answers it. it that you know, it's an ambiguous, uh, big topic, but yeah, no, it definitely answers the question. I mean, I, and that's funny. I think that I, yeah, that's why dude, I'm so big on mindset because like, yeah, I just feel like mindset really controls a lot of how you actually succeed. And I feel yeah. like I spend too much time because I'm so competitive and I love winning that I spent too much time being like worrying about being at the top of a level when I, yeah. I, I feel like the best way to grow is always look at the next level and think that you're either at the bottom or you're not even at the bottom of the next level, exactly. yep. you know? So for yep. me, it's like dude, that, that, and that right there happens with every facet of what I'm doing. So I can't even begin to talk about everything, but with just mixing, for example, I think for me, like my thing is I'm still really like really challenged with just getting that really, really good balance of every track, like every piece of it, like from all my vocal yeah. layers to every single melody instrument to the kick, everything. Cause you know, I'm producing, yeah. I'm making the beats too. And it's, 
Oh, that's I killer. Like, so you're doing it all. Yeah. I mean, so, I have songs where I have someone else produce the beat, but 90% of the songs I've, 99% of the songs I've released in the past three years, I've made, done literally the entire thing, which is way harder wow. because that distance from that piece of the process makes it easier. Like it'd be easier for me to mix if I didn't totally. make the beat, but I make the beat, right? Or it's easier to write lyrics when you don't yep. make the beat. It's harder when you- Yeah, you're, you're almost too, too close to it. That's a good way to put it. You're, if you're so close, you can't see all the deep. That's a great way to, I love that. When you're further away, you can see everything. That's great, yeah. So That's true. what tips do you have for me on that? Like in terms of just like balancing everything, priority, and I do mainly hip hop, rap, R&B. What's the priority? Um, yeah. in terms of what should be heard spaces that need to be filled what tips can you give me on that you're talking like specifically within a mix, like we're yes. talking mix. yep i mean the vocal you brought it up early but is is far and away the most important thing i heard someone say i can't remember who the quote was or i'd give credit but like not everyone knows how an 808 should sound but everyone knows how a voice should sound Mm -hmm. So that's going to be the most important thing in any mix, not to mention the trend right now, which this has been the case in pop music for many years, but like pop vocals are really prevalent in mixes right now. Like a lot of people talk and you know, there are different styles for sure. But like a lot of people talk about wanting the, the vocals to feel like they're in the beat, which sometimes it's both that they're loud, but still in it. But man, you listen to pop music, which I'm, I'm putting hip hop, hip hop is as pop as it gets right now. It's like top 40. So it's, vocals are just so loud in mixes so i'm not advocating that you just simply turn your vocals up and that's the answer but vocals are definitely the most important thing is my point um that is a whole other rabbit trail like you said there are a lot of different conversations we could have within that for me that, that all boils down to eq and compression if you can get those basic fundamental things right if you know how to carve a vocal out just right without gutting it making it thin but you know taking the mess out letting it be clean and crisp and fat and then you know how to compress it right if the foundation of the vocal sounds clean when you're adding effects they're going to sound better and you're not hiding anything mm. uh, when you're adding when you're putting it within the beat you're not having to hide the vocal you know you don't have to turn the beat up because you're afraid the vocal doesn't sound good i mean i can't tell you how many mixes i've either heard or even done myself you know, in the past where I've not liked the sound of the vocal. So whether it's conscious or not, you are, you're trying to bury it, you know, you're trying to hide it underneath like sounds bad. So let's put it in telephone effect or this vocal sounds like I didn't sing this quite right. So let's just absolutely drench it in auto tune and, uh, and reverb and delay, right. which sometimes those effects, that vibe is right. But again, full circle, like if you can get the EQ and compression, right. And you know, if it's a melodic thing, tuning is a big deal to me. Um, then effects are just extra sauce. I think it's a pretty common thing. Like this is a, you know, a really cookie cutter example, but like people ask all the time, true, like literally ask me all the time, like why does Drake sound so good? If you listen to a Drake vocal, it is so often so dry, it's crazy. It is so basic, but it's because they got that foundation right. It's like, it's like a high end product. You know what I mean? Like they don't need to put the extra sauce on it. Cause it's like, you're, I don't know, you're paying a, like 500 bucks for a steak with no sauce, but it's the best steak you'll ever have. Like it's right. just good on its own. So, and then to the other stuff, I mean, again, vocals are most important to me, the rest of it, like in, in the beat, if you're mixing beat sense, it's just about making space. So mm -hmm. that's both from a spatial perspective, like panning left and right, creating space for the vocal to be in the middle or wherever it needs to be, as well as EQ, which I, you know, like, I feel like I'm becoming the EQ guy on TikTok, but if you can find a way to carve all the EQs out just right, you'll make space for everything to be as loud and audible as it needs without, you know, everything stepping on the toes of the thing next to it. So. Totally. Yeah. And one, one, so a lot of things come to mind with what you said. Great explanation, by the way. Yeah. Like, that was awesome. Yeah. So I, I think for me, um, what I notice that helps with me, and this is just me in particular, everybody's different is, I try to do only a little bit at each step and each step to me is a plug-in is a step. So EQ, yeah. that's a step. And then the compressor. And then if we have to add, a, I don't know, another EQ, yep. whatever it is, like every plugin is the next step. So for me, I'm always like, when I'm starting the mix, I'm always like, don't try to like, like, I don't put the, I personally just don't put the pressure on myself to EQ it perfectly right away. I'm like, let's throw an EQ. Let's take, do the obvious stuff that I know is going to work take out the low end, yep, yep. this down the third, compress so that you know, just get it to sound really good. And then you're like, all right, 
let's throw those let now 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 let's adjust like i have the patience to know that you're not going to get your you don't have to get your mix perfect right away it's kind of like the way i think about hooks like the first hook that i write isn't going to be the final hook for the song same thing with mixing especially with vocals um the other thing i would say too and i want to get your perspective is so like when i was first starting out learning entrepreneurship mixing mastering producing all that i was constantly looking for blueprints and frameworks and i was like how do i do that like i need to copy what somebody else does from step to step and uh it turns out that that actually held me back. What I should have been just doing was what are the rules and what are the tools that I, that are at my disposal? And let me think of my own process. And that yeah. works not just for mixing, but for business as well. And so I've learned that mixing yeah. doesn't really have rules, but it's like, well, everybody's going to EQ your vocal. Everybody's going to throw compression on yeah. your vocal. So it's like, those are like just kind of general things, but how you do it is different. Talk about, yeah the way, how have you evolved with how you think about mixing and what, what do you have to say about the idea that mixing has no rules? Uh, I agree in a creative sense. Absolutely. There is no right or wrong. Uh, I'll say right up front though, on the back end, at least for commercial vocals, like all, all commercial songs on Spotify or iTunes are going to hit a certain way Mm -hmm. within that box. There's massive, creativity you know it's, it's very open again there are no rules but like master levels are going to hit about the same the eq quality of at least the entire song is going to be about the same so i only clarify that to say that like you can do whatever you want creatively but then there comes a point where you're going to want it to sound fat and clean and crisp right like right. who doesn't want it to sound good but yeah i agree with you there there are no rules i see people do uh Again, the, the best analogy I can come up with, which is the quickest way to answer the question, is the barber analogy. I didn't intend, I've never been a barber in my life, by the way, but <laughs> that's just the best analogy I can, uh, the parallel I can draw. And that is like, we're all probably using the same tools, maybe different ways, different techniques. Uh, so that's, again, those aren't rules, but like like you said, you know you're going to do some EQing. You know compression is going to be involved. You know effects are going to be involved. And you're just going to do it your way and figure it out. I think uh, to speak to what you said about trying to follow a a blueprint and maybe that, you know, unintentionally being a negative thing, I can agree with you. I actually, it's funny, I've been in this forever, but I've never, it wasn't until recently within the last handful of years that I got into the audio world. What I mean by that is I never pursued this content. I, 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 I don't watch the people who do what I do, as bizarre as that sounds. Now, I know enough now. To, I've been doing it for so long that I know what I'm doing is commercially acceptable. So I'm not feigning like, oh, I'm, I've, never, I've never listened to anyone else. You know, like now I'm looking things up like that and, and aware of what's going on out there. But I say that to say, kind of like you said, it's, that was a positive for me. It allowed me to figure out my own process, find out what I like, use the tools that were at my disposal, but, but come up with my own techniques. So that's, yeah, that's how I would answer that. I don't think that's weird at all. I, I, I've actually found that in the last year or so that I'm consumed much less content because yeah well I mean I I'm, I'm di- I, I don't know I I consumed a lot of content in yeah. 20 2018 and 2019 ish yeah. like I consumed so much that I was like it does get to that certain point where you like you 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 it's it's really hard that balance between um still always wanting to grow and learn but also realizing like, you know, enough to, to do stuff. You need to like, some days yeah. you need to just not like, there's some days where I'm like, dude, stop. You don't need to, you don't need to like learn a new tactic. Like you just need to like yeah. do it. You know what I mean? And so yep. that's you been really, well put, yeah. yeah, that's tough for me. Just life in general, you know, like just balancing that whole, like, where should I keep looking for? Cause there, I think there's a difference between learning and looking for answers. Learning is like, you can never stop learning. Learning is great. You could learn about anything freaking, you could learn about interior yeah. design. It might have not have anything to do with music, but whatever, learn about it. Cause it might grow your brain. Yeah. But then there's that I'm in the pursuit for an answer. And I feel yeah. like, ah, uh, this is speak on this. Cause I could be wrong, but for me, I'm like, when I'm in the pursuit of an answer, it means I don't have the answer right now in front of me. But if I have enough answers yeah. in front of me, why would I need to keep asking questions about that? So like, just trying to talk about like how you feel about just yeah. balancing, like always learning, but then knowing like, well, I'm Shane Lance. I know what I'm doing. Like, how's what's that balance for you? Yeah. Dude, that's a great, that's a, a big portion of that to me is self-awareness, right? Having, 
having the confidence in who you are now, but being aware that you want to grow. And it's just this, this constant balance of both of those things simultaneously. To make it specific to mixing, just so that I can answer the question concisely, which this maybe applies to all of life, but specific to mixing, I think that comes down to what you say stands out to me. And I'm telling people this all the time. So not to get back on my uh, EQ is just a good example for, again, yeah. just using it as, a, as a, a foundation. I think what you're saying is right because people are often, we'll put it specifically in audio terms, looking for the next plugin or the next technique that's going to make their stuff sound fire. They're, they've have, they got a sale on this uh, auto tune or that reverb. And they think all those extra things are going to be the solution when really, if they would just zero back in on what they already have, the plugins they already have, the foundational stuff and, and practice what they already know, which this goes back to what you said, which I think is said perfectly. Like you don't always need to pursue to know something new. Why don't you just practice what's already in front of you? Unless you've mastered what's already in front of you, you know, then, then it's just all extra. So that's, that's how it plays out for me. I think if people were to focus on, and again, this applies to all of life, but in a mixing perspective, if, if they were to just focus on the fundamental, getting a good, clean, crispy core vocal sound, for example, to make it really pinpointed, uh, they would need to pursue all the extra stuff. Yeah. So I agree with you. And again, that's a, that's a, I'm giving a small answer for a big question, but you get it. I think that's absolutely true. Often we have plenty, plenty in front of us. Right. I mean, and so I always relate stuff back to uh, business and digital marketing. Cause that's like, that's sometimes the bigger thing that I do is more, I actually do more business yeah. entrepreneurship stuff than I do music stuff. Um, and uh, it's so oh. similar. Like when I'm building a, a beat bundle, like I do beat bundles and I put, and I'll yeah. put them up on a website. I use this thing called click funnels and like do sales funnels and stuff like that. Yeah. So like, the way that you want to get that perfect mix and master, it's the same with like yeah. putting out a beat bundle. It's literally the same like mental framework. It's completely different worlds, yeah. but an EQ and a compressor is to mixing as a, as a headline and a video is to a freaking beat bundle. Like it's, these little, yeah. Tools. Yeah. it's these little tools and same with business. You just need to know what is the over like what are all the tools like you got an eq compressor reverb delay blah 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 all that auto tune melodyne this and the third for fun for websites it's like well you got facebook ads you've got youtube ads you've got email marketing you've got you got websites like wordpress or you got click funnels and you got within each one of those each one of those things has a a, a ton of tools and that's where i get to this whole you got to stop trying to copy everybody else's framework and you've got to just take what you know and just how do I build the combos? You know, like, like, uh, I don't know if you've ever heard of a guy named Legion beats. Do you know who that is? I can't say I have. Okay. Take, check him out. Google Legion beats. You'll see, but he's, like, he's a mentor of mine. And he like, he is the guy who like really pioneered sales funnels in the selling beats online world. He didn't pioneer it actually. He's been reinventing it, but he's like big on it. And so, he does this thing where he does contest funnels, which never has been done. Okay. So he'll yeah. like do this whole contest idea where he gets people to like sign up for his email list because they want to join in his contest. But then he's like yeah. upselling them on more stuff in the back end. And he ends up getting yeah. a ton of interest out of that. And that was from him. He never really saw a lot of contests, but he was just like, let me just like try this out like try out a contest launch and he just thought of it and it exploded. Like he's done six figure sure. launches in a week or two weeks because of a contest, but he thought of that. Wow. And it's just like taking the yeah. stuff that you like have at your disposal and just like, yo, let me just build it. It's like Legos, bro. Let me just build these building blocks. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So big rant, but that's kind of the, no, what was going true. on in my head when yeah. I asked. Yeah. 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 So, so let me ask you that. Like, what's like, what is like a, out, now let's go outside of mixing, like outside yeah. of like mixing and all that. What is the next step for you in your career? It's a great question, man. I am thinking and praying about that a ton, right? As we speak, right. I've done this, like I said, forever. Uh, I'm in a band and pursue some of my own creative stuff outside of this. Uh, my wife does modeling stuff and has her own thing. So we're in a space. I answer, I say all of that to say like we are in a life space where we're asking ourselves that exact question. I would say, I can't give a solid answer, but what I'll say is I'm most passionate and most fulfilled by 
the communication side. I enjoy conversations like this. I like adding value and that that's become kind of a cheesy, although I, you know, I can tell we believe in it, but like right. it sounds cheesy or like this Gary Vee thing to, to people just in the basic TikTok world or something. But I love that stuff. I love to help people. I love, I, I've been an artist and lived in the studio artist world for a long time. And so sharing insight on living a life of full-time creativity with, with people who need help. I love that stuff. So I don't have a solid answer as to what that looks like. I feel like similar to the way you talked about what you're doing and you, you know, your buddy, but it's a Legion beats. Yeah. He's invented. I say this and mean it legitimately. I don't mean for it to sound cheesy, but I feel like I'm inventing something as I go. I don't have a blueprint to follow. I can't look at someone else and say, they're doing what I want to do. There are different people doing facets of what I want, but ultimately uh, I will always be involved in music and that's clearly the bread and butter right now. It's, it's what's uh, fanning the flame, so to speak. It's the, it's the fuel in the gas tank right now. And I'm good with that. But ultimately I love the communication side of it and helping people. So I think as I continue to go, I don't know if that's content, uh, which I'm already doing. I don't know if it's more public speaking opportunities, which I'm doing that too, or if it's my own music, it's probably going to be a mixture of all of that, but really leaning on the, uh, that side of it, sharing information with people, helping people on a personal level. That's, that's awesome, dude. I love that. Crazy. I love hearing that because that's so different for me. And I like to get yeah. that different perspectives. Like, yeah. I feel like I put a little bit too much pressure on myself on yeah. what's the next step. What's the next step. What's the, I, that's, I don't know. And I got to, yeah. I, I want to see, I like your, your approach is so much more like just go with the flow. What happens, happens, take, take things as they come. Um, take, well, so, so let me ask you, so what are, what are some things that maybe you're like really intrigued by that you're like, Oh, maybe I would want to like check that out. Like, do you have anything like that in your life? Uh, do, how do you mean specifically like different trades or different people or yeah, jobs like different, or, I don't know, like different, like maybe opportunities or different concepts or different things. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like what, what are those for you? Yeah. Well, first of all, speak, I like what you said. I, I'm in the same boat as you though. I'm, I'm a planner. Like I oh. like to know what's happening. I like, I said, I wasn't a perfectionist earlier, but I'm really meticulous. Sometimes the, the structure like the plan is more fun to me than the creative side. I, I feel often, I legitimately feel like I might be more suited to be like the sound. I don't mean this as a pat on the back, but just personality wise, like I could probably better manage like a massive company versus be an artist. Like that's the mind that I have. And I enjoy thinking that way structurally, mm -hmm. but I'm also like, I'm a very spiritual person and I have learned over a long period of time. I'm, I'm it's again, it's both at once. I'm, I'm a hard worker. I'm a planner. I, I make things happen. And simultaneously, I am fully aware that I can't make everything happen right now. So you, you can only take the step that you see in front of you. And when you don't know what to do, you do what you know to do. And so right now, I'm just doing what I know to do and what's working and believing and kind of asking myself the same questions you're asking, like, where do I want to go? And just believing that that's pulling me in that right ultimate direction. I don't need to know exactly what it looks like to get there. Um, and then to answer your, your question specifically, I think I understand what you mean. So I'll say, you know, I'm intrigued by the possibility of uh, my wife and I are considering a potential move at some point that might put me in a position to work uh, more with the artists who are pulling on me, you know, just hot spots, music hot spots. Um, I'm put, right now I have a lot of opportunity to, to step out of kind of the current space I'm in where I'm working with my own clientele. I mean, it would still be my clientele, but I have years and years of built up clientele of independent artists. And, and now with internet stuff, just I already had more than I can handle. And now it's absurd, but I'm in a position where I could start to, to level up and work with some more commercial artists. And I'm not just saying this to like feign humility, but I'm not sure that that's the trajectory I want to go on. I, I don't forever want to just be the mixing guy. So I think that will be a part I've had to really embrace. And this is probably a good thing. I imagine you know this, but good thing to share with listeners because this has been a, like a, a revelation for me lately. I have had to really accept lately that I'm not going to be defined or fulfilled by one specific thing in my life. It's going to be many facets. It's going to be mixing. It's going to be communicating. It's going to be my own creativity. It's going to be my family and spirituality. It's, it's all of the things at once. You can't look for one uh, that's why we talked early on in this conversation about, at least I mentioned, and it seemed like you agree, but I don't think people in this 
music industry need to be pursuing a job. I, I think you just need to pursue your passion and let let it come to you. Go get it, but let it come to you, you know, yeah. without pursuing some job title. That's a big ambiguous answer to a big ambiguous question, but that's totally. what intrigues me. It's just the next next opportunity in every area of passion for my life and just kind of letting it evolve, trusting that it will turn into exactly what I'm supposed to to step into. Right. Man, that's great stuff, man. That that's awesome. I'm I'm so I really appreciate you sharing that perspective with me. That really helps me actually. And I'm I'm not, I didn't even think we were gonna go down this road at all. <laughs> like I did not and I'm, I'm glad, glad we did. Man. Yeah, and it, it helps me. It helps yeah. me to think about, and I'm sure my listeners are, you know, sh they should be enjoying this because, you know, um, you know, I think getting the next best tips and tricks are always um, important. But to me, like, I'm, I'm, I, I wouldn't say I'm super spiritual only because, dude, I don't get it at all, and I haven't even tried to think about it. But I just am in tune with yeah. who I am, and so I realize for me, the yeah. stuff that's really helped me is like, like the stuff that I used to think was really difficult isn't as hard, but the stuff that I thought was easy is hard. So the stuff that I used to think was difficult was um, like understanding business, like understanding business, obviously like to actually succeed at business is not easy, but yeah. to just understand like the idea of like how to earn a living. It's I'm like how to make your own income. I'm like, Oh, that's not, that's not hard to understand at all. Like that's yeah. you have something people want and you deliver it to them better than anybody else. And then you make money. That's the framework to execute really fucking yeah. difficult, but the sh stuff that's hard yeah. to understand is like yourself and your emotions and like your mind and how to like, yep. how do I get past things? Like, but, but that's the problem is that I used to overlook it and all the people that I'm serving that everybody overlooks that. Like everybody's like, what's the next growth hack for Instagram or how do I do that? I'm like, well, do you even like, are you happy with what you're doing? And they can't answer that. Or what are your mm -hmm. goals for the next 30 days? Can't answer yeah. that. And it's like, well, Dude, yep. you're worrying about a growth hack and a mix and what EQ is the best. It's like, but you don't even, you're not happy. You're not self-aware. Yep. And it's yep. like, I like your attitude. Your attitude is I'm really going to adopt that more of just like let things happen the way they happen and just, just go with the flow. Like I, I like yep. that a lot. Dude, that's well put. I'll, I'll say to that, like I might be a bit old school in this way. I'm not that old, but like I've done this for a long time, pre, pre TikTok, pre Instagram. Right. So I spent a lot of years building, and I'm still on that journey as I just shared, but I spent a lot of years building to the place that I am now without regard for like, okay, how can I, how can I take a picture of this and present it? How can I make this look good? How, you know what I mean? It was never about how it looked to the internet. So now that I am producing content, I, I have the privilege of being happy with my life and presenting what is authentic because I, I didn't build this thing to present it. It's just what I do literally every day. So now I just take pictures and videos of it on the internet and share it with the world. And I think that approach is, and you just said it, you know, kind of the other way, that approach is really healthy. When you just do what you do and find a way, like maybe even back off the internet for a second, I'm not saying you or I, but like if someone needs to, like back away from the question, like, okay, how can I capture this to make it go viral? Like just give up on that for two seconds, get to a place where you're happy and content with yourself and then present your authentic self to the internet just so much more fulfilling. Yeah. Way more, way more, man. Uh, I appreciate having you so much, man. I don't want to take up too much of your time, but if you could just plug yourself a little bit, where can people find you the best and um, maybe some last closing thoughts that you got for people? Absolutely. Well, first of all, man, again, I appreciate you. This has been fun. Thank you. I, again, I, I think we're similar in this way, but I enjoy this kind of thing. So I'm honored. Thanks for having me. Um, people can find me on TikTok, as you said, or on IG or Twitter. Uh, all of it's just W Shane Lance. My website is wshanelance.com. I had that for people to relieve my DMs, which has not helped really, but, but it has like, people are still going there and still DMing me. So it hasn't really streamlined my life, but it's helping, uh, bring in more work, I guess. But so yeah, if people want to talk about working together, they can hit the website. I cannot, I try to give this disclaimer because I've had some people upset with me when I've not been able to work. I can't take on every project. I'm in a position where I, I'm, I'm so busy that I have to, I get to choose who I work with based on who I think I can provide the most value to. But that said, if someone wants to work, go to the website, wshanelance.com. And then lastly, I will absolutely self-promote and say that at the end of this week, I'm launching a Patreon page uh, with tutorials, mixing tutorials. Oh, People wow. have been asking that for that since the beginning of all this TikTok stuff. It wasn't something I was really interested in, but I've got myself in a position where... Um, 
I, I'm biting off a, a bite I can chew. So I'll be releasing a few tutorial videos a month as well as live stream content where I mix in front of people and answer questions. So, so go check that out. I'll, I'll be dropping that like on my IG and TikTok. So if people don't, you know, go follow me in one of those places and you'll see me promote it. But, but watch out for that. If anyone's interested in specific, like really in-depth mixing tips, that's what I'm going to dig into there. Awesome. Well, guys, if you, if you have the chance, I mean, go check out Shane's stuff. If you're interested in learning about mixing, I think just, just Shane's TikTok alone will give you a lot of insight on that. And uh, if you're interested in getting in contact with him, I would say, you know, go hit him up. He's a super dope dude, obviously, from the video you just saw on the pod. And, uh, you know, if you can, leave a rating, leave a review, subscribe to this pod, share it with a friend. If you're on YouTube, subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit the bell notification. Appreciate you so much for listening, and we'll talk to you again tomorrow. Peace.